But before we tackle writing, we understand that some basic equipment is needed to make a film. So let's talk about that since everyone is anxiously awaiting this conversation. Now there are three hardware groups that we're going to have to address. Number one is cameras, number two is sound equipment, and number three is lighting. Today, we only talk about cameras. Now, in the first episode, I said that there was no free lunch. So what is the most basic entry fee needed to get started in filmmaking? How much money do you really need? My answer, between five and six hundred dollars. And that's just to get the equipment. Okay? That's for a very non-professional setup, but there it is. Understand that many cameras can cost over a thousand dollars by themselves, so I don't think that number is really that bad. Of course, who has five hundred dollars just laying around? Is there a way to lower that cost? Yes, there is. But first, let's start the discussion on cameras. Okay, cameras. You know, this is probably going to be the most important and most expensive purchase that you're going to have to make. So let's take a look at this next graphic. When you look at this, you can see that there are four levels of cameras and you really only need to pay attention to two of those levels and that's the middle two. Down at the bottom we have the low end category and those are your phone cameras and your HD or high definition cameras and those kind of cameras can only shoot at 720 by 1080 pixels. Uh, I think you need better than that so just pass on those. Now what is that green circle or that green dot in the low end level? Well that's the top of the line phone cameras. You know, even those units are still in the low end, but they're in the high part of that level, actually trying to poke through the floor of the mid-level. And that's why I think they are viable as filmmaking cameras. You know, they're just about there. So what are these top camera, phone cameras, excuse me? Well, I'm going to show you a chart, and it's not exhaustive, but it is the top ranked phone cameras as of April 2020. Now, these phone cameras are much better than your average phone and if you want to use a phone camera as your main filmmaking camera, it really should be a phone from this list. Now I know that that may not have included all the uh, phones that have a telephoto lens or that can provide bokeh. If you know of some others, why don't you go ahead and leave some comments down below and let uh, all the viewers know what's available. We said in the first episode that if you used your phone camera to shoot your film that it could be done but it, could, it would take a lot of planning. Let's talk about what that means. The average phone camera works best outside and the reason is because of the lighting. Average run-of-the-mill phone cameras work very poorly in low light conditions. Watch this clip coming up here and this is taken outside on a very cloudy day. You know that's not bad, not much light, but it is outside. Now if all of your clips in your movie are going to be done outside then maybe your average phone camera can be used. I mean it's perhaps doable. But using the phone camera inside a building during the day is really going to be chancy depending on the light. To be effective, you're going to have to use more light than you would normally have to use for a standalone camera. To me, that's a lot of work and bother. However, also note that these ordinary phone cameras cannot give you that much sought after bokeh or blurred background effect. A telephoto lens is needed for that and that's what makes the run-of-the-mill phone camera inflexible. The high-end phone cameras have these telephoto lenses and they can get you that bokeh 
In addition, they can also provide simulated bokeh via masking and a secondary image. Basically, that's another reason to recruit someone that already has that kind of camera if you're going to use phones. And folks, you know what? That's also the answer to how are you going to lower that entry fee to get into filmmaking. You know, there's lots of people out there that have high-end phones, they have, or maybe they have a good zoom lens camera, or maybe even a good DSLR, and they're all looking for an opportunity to use them. So you need to go find these people. And if you do, and you can partner with them, just think, not only will you save hundreds, but you won't have to do all the work yourself. Now, I'm not saying to approach these people and say, hey, can I borrow your equipment? What I'm saying is you want to bring these people on board as team members. What if I just go out and buy one of those add-on telephoto lenses for my camera phone? Uh, you mean one of these, don't you? You know, these things really don't work that well. And no, I do not recommend them.